Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Now in this video we are going to learn about the universal law of gravitation from Newton's observation. Now from our childhood we have been hearing about the story of an apple falling on Newton's head and from the observation of this falling apple he concluded the universal law of gravitation. So did really apple fell on his head or what was the actual phenomena he would observed that thing we are going to observe in this video. So Newton what he observed that the moon it is revolving around the earth okay in a circular path. So if this is the earth and this is the moon. So this moon is revolving around the earth in a circular path in a period of around 27.3 days. And this is the period of revolution of moon. Okay. Now what he did was see this moon when it's moving in a circular path it must be acted upon by a centripetal force. Okay. So the from that there must be some centripetal acceleration. So acceleration of the moon see centripetal acceleration it is given by the expression A is equal to V square by R. Okay. So for moon it is V square by the radius of the moon radius of the path along which the moon is revolving. Okay. Now see this how did he found the value of V and Rm. See V it was calculated see V is the speed of revolution. Okay. Now speed of revolution is twice pi Rm the circumference of the path this is Rm. So circumference of the path is twice pi Rm divided by T. So this is V square of this divided by Rm square. Rm is the radius of the path of the moon. Okay. So this is this comes to be around uh, 4 pi square Rm divided by T square. Okay. So this is the acceleration of the moon radial acceleration of the moon. Okay. Now the value of T was already known 27.3 days and this radius of the path circular path it was also known and it was around 3.84 into 10 power 8 meter. Okay. Now from these values so by substituting the value of Rm and T the value of Am was found to be very small. Am was very small. Am was very small compared to the value of G on earth. See on earth on earth on earth acceleration it is due to gravity okay so the value of this am was very small as compared to the value of g but what was the cause of this as observed by newton see acceleration is caused by force okay and force is due to the force of gravitation of earth but moon is far away see acceleration of any object on the surface of earth is far greater than acceleration of moon that is because of the reason that that object on the surface of earth it is very close moon is very far off okay so from this he concluded that acceleration is inversely proportional to distance there is some inverse proportional distance relation between acceleration and distance so if acceleration is inversely proportional to distance then force has to be inversely proportional to distance okay so force that means if distance increases acceleration if distance increases distance increases acceleration decreases acceleration decreases so if acceleration decreases force also should decrease okay so what he proposed that if acceleration on the acceleration of the moon it is inversely proportional to radius of the this circular path taken by the moon square that okay and for g acceleration due to the acceleration due to gravity that is acceleration on the surface of earth then it will be inversely proportional to the radius of the uh, square the radius of the earth square okay so in that case if you write the substitute the values if you write this so in that case we have g by am 
is equal to Rm square by Re square. Okay. Now, this value comes to be around 3600. That is, if see, if, if we substitute the values of this Rm and Re square of Rm square and Re square, this value comes to be around 3600. Okay. Now, this is in agreement with the known values of AM and G. Means if you substitute the value of G and AM, the ratio of that is also 3600. Okay. So, this see this observation, this result is based on this assumption. Okay. So, that means since this result is correct, that means this assumption is also correct. So, that means acceleration is inversely proportional to square of the distance. Now, if acceleration is inversely proportional to square of the distance, acceleration is produced by force. So, force this implies that force is also inversely proportional to square of the distance. Okay. So, from this observation, he gave the famous universal law of gravitation. So, that is known as the Newton's universal law of gravitation, which says that, so the statement is, every body in the universe attracts every other body with a force which is directly proportional to product of their masses and inversely proportional to square the distance between them. Okay. Now, what is the true meaning of this? If two, you have two masses, m1 and m2, separated by distance r, then the force of gravitation between the two, it is proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to force of gravitation is inversely proportional to square the distance of separation. Okay. So, from this we have, if we combine these two proportional conditions, we have F proportional to m1 m2 by r square. If you remove the proportionality symbol, we have F is equal to g m1 m2 by r square. Okay. Now, this g is called the universal gravitational constant. This g is universal gravitational universal gravitation constant okay so this is newton's law of gravitation and the value of this g universal gravitation constant g it is equal to 6.67 into 10 power minus 11 newton meter square per kg square okay so this is universal gravitation constant it is a constant throughout the universe okay for any mass for any system for any medium this constant value this is constant so the force of attraction between two masses is independent of nature of the medium so this force of gravitation force will not change if this mass if this mass m1 and m2 whether they are placed in vacuum or whether they are placed in water or any in the medium this force of gravitation will not change force of gravitation is independent of nature of medium so, next part of the video is uh, the determination of this gravitation constant by Cavendish experiment. So, Cavendish performed the experiment to obtain the value of the gravitational constant. So, for this what he did, he took a rod suspended from a support okay, and uh, this rod at the end of the rod at the two ends we have two small lead spheres. Okay. And uh, see, once these, this is one pair of large lead spheres. This is a bit large size as compared to the one attached to the two ends of the rod. Okay. Now, these spheres were brought near the two spheres, small spheres from opposite direction. One is brought from this direction, one is brought from this direction. Okay. So, there was a force of attraction between these two spheres. There is also a force of attraction between these two spheres. Now, the force between these two spheres and the force between these two spheres, it is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. So, net force of the system was zero, but there was a torque. Okay. Now, again, this sphere was brought to the, this side and this sphere was brought to this side. Again, the force was measured and the torque was calculated. Now, what was the torque? Torque will be simply the force of attraction, force of gravitation multiplied by the length of the rod. Okay. So, if m is the capital M is the mass of this large lead sphere and small m is the mass of the small lead sphere and d is the distance of separation d is the distance of separation okay so in that case the force of gravitation will be g m m 
by d square okay so this is the force okay now if l is the length of this rod if l is the length of this rod then torque produced due to this force it is tau is equal to f multiplied by length okay so that is tau is equal to gmm by d square multiplied by l okay now what does this torque causes this torque causes the this rod the system to rotate okay so this will come in this direction this will come this dash this will go in the other direction okay so there will be a twist in this wire okay so there will be a twist in this wire so if theta is the twist okay so so the restoring torque that is produced in this wire is tau r is equal to tau into theta okay now this tau is the couple per unit twist or torque per unit twist okay torque per unit twist and theta is the twist twist means the angle through which this system rotates this rod rotates okay so now at equilibrium see this this force is trying to rotate the system this rod and this is the restoring torque it is trying to bring the system in its original position so at equilibrium these two torques will be equal okay so at equilibrium they will become equal so if they are equal in that case i can write gmm l divided by d square is equal to tau into theta now see this value of m capital m small m l d all these tau theta these are known okay now if the known values were substituted and from this you can calculate the value of g the value of g was found to be 6.67 into 10 power minus 11 newton meter square per kg square so this is the this is how cavendish performed the experiment and obtained the value of universal gravitation constant so th this is the video based on universal law of gravitation and determination of gravitation constant by cavendish experiment so hope this video is beneficial to you good luck